All right, in this exercise, we're going to be creating quite a few different mates and creating kind of a working project in an assembly. So the first thing we need to do, since this is someone else's document, we need to make a copy so that we can edit. So click on Make a Copy to Edit, and then Create Copy. Once the workspace loads, the first thing we want to do is add an assembly to this project. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the lower left-hand corner. There's a plus symbol, and then Find create assembly and that's going to open up a new blank workspace where we can work in three dimensions to create an assembly between our different part elements. So the first thing in an assembly you need to do is insert some objects to play around with. So I'm going to click on the insert option there and I'm going to be whoa still says generating preview. Okay click on the part studio it's going to then import everything that's inside that part studio. So it's a quick way to add all of the objects in uh, your project. So once I've clicked that, I've essentially grabbed it, and now I can click anywhere in my workspace to place it. I'm done placing objects, so I'm going to click on the check mark to close that dialog box. All right, first thing in this we want to ground one of our parts and for this exercise it makes sense to use the base as our grounded element the one thing that doesn't move and then all the other parts are going to connect to it and interact with that so I'm going to click on the base and you get this thing it's called a centeroid and this allows you to place a reference point on the object and I want to place this ref reference point at the center instead of kind of in a random spot. So I'm going to find the center of the centeroid, the little central circle there. I'm going to find it and click it and hold and drag it around my object. Now you can see there's a lot of implied connection points here. And I want to find the one that lands it right in the center, like what you see on my screen right now. Once it's there, I'm just gonna release my mouse to accept the snap point to put it right there in the center. Now the next step I want to do is I want to align the Z, which would be this here, because it's this is the plane, this would be the XY plane, and then this sticking out this way would be the Z. That makes kind of sense. And I want to align this Z with kind of my global Z, which is found right here. And in this world, you can see if I'm viewing from the top, then Z is you know, facing straight up. If I'm viewing from the bottom, vice versa. You can see there's a top and there's a bottom. So I wanted, what I want to do is align this um, centroids Z with the global Z. So right now, if I hover over that arrow, I can click it, or right click, sorry. And the very two options at the top there are align with Z or anti-align with Z. If I were, align, were to align this with Z, then it would align this arrow with that Z. So it'd be kind of upside down. So the bottom would be facing the top. So what I want to choose instead would be anti-align with Z. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to rotate my base to be in position to where it is aligned properly with Z. And you can see it's anti-aligned because this arrow is going down and this arrow, is, the Z, is going up where it should be. So hopefully that made sense. So now that it's aligned properly, the next thing I want to do is put it where I want it to be. And in every workspace, there is an origin point, which just makes sense that you would place the center of your project there or ground one of your objects on the point of origin. So the next step is I'm going to again find my centroid and right click the center and then choose the very top option, move to origin. And that's just going to move that into position. Now this is still not fixed in place. So the last step 
to do that would be now to right click the object and choose fix. So now if I were to try to move my object, you get the symbol there that it's fixed and also a little do not move sign next to the hand. And also on the left hand side, you can see in my list of objects, that one has a fixed symbol as well. So now the base is fixed in place. And I'm reading off my list of notes here. So if I pause for a minute, I'm just trying to find where I'm at in my process. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is fasten mate the bushing to the base. So this red thing right here is the bushing. And I want to fasten this to be aligned with these holes here in the base. Let me go ahead and orbit so we can see a little bit better. So what I'm going to be doing there is I'm using a fasten mate because this will not move. It's not going to slide. It's just connected to the base. So I'm going to find the fasten mate option. And I want to fasten it to where the inside here, kind of this inside lined, not the middle and not the top, but the kind of this inside circle. Right there, I'm going to click to place that mate. And I want to mate that to, I'm going to hover over, let me go ahead and move this. I want it to be in the center of this surface here. So I'm going to hover over this and hold shift. That's going to allow me to move the point over. So I'm going to be on the same plane as this surface, but in the center of this hole. So I'm going to go ahead and click right there. All right, so now it has fastened it, but I need to reverse the primary axis. So that will flip the Z around to be the correct direction. So I'm going to go ahead and click the little arrow thing. It's going to flip the Z around. And I'm going to orbit just to make sure it looks like it's in the right spot. And it certainly does look correct. So we're done with that step. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark to accept that. And next thing I'm going to do is create a slider mate with the plunge, plunger. That's this gray guy right here. And I want this to be a slider mate. So up here at the top, slider mate allows it to travel and linearly within a cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And the mate connectors don't really matter I mean, as far as where on the cylinder it's placed, because it's going to travel. So I'm going to just place it right here. Anywhere on the cylinder would be fine. Top, bottom, middle, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to place the mate somewhere on that cylinder. The next mate does somewhat matter, because if I were to create the cylindrical, no, it's a slider mate, not cylindrical. If I were to create this slider mate to the bushing, then if I were to delete the bushing, I would also be deleting that mate. So I'm not going to create that dependency. I'm going to go ahead and use something that should always be there, which would be the base. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same reference point that I did before. I'm just going to hold in shift key on this surface and then find the center of that hole again and click to place it. So now you can see I have mated the plunger to the base and now it's traveling in the direction that I want it to. So that's the relationship that we want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark to accept that. Alright, the next step in here is probably the most difficult concept to get. I'm going to go ahead and move this little bracket out of the way and our handle is what makes everything move. 
So it's very important that we have this placed in the right spot and that all of the mates are correct. So the first thing I need to do is create a mate that will mate the center of these holes right here in the center to the center of this cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that without what I know I need to do. So I'm going to try to do this to where uh, I need to have a uh, sorry I'm reading my notes here okay just trying to figure out which mate we're trying to be doing I think it's a revolute yes a revolute mate so a revolute mate allows it to rotate which is the mate that we want to have and what I need to do is attach the center of this hole but it's not going to work because I need the center between the two holes and if I hover over that it doesn't give me that reference point so what I need to do now is these are implicit mates and they work really well for most circumstances but occasionally the mate does not exist so I need to make what's called an explicit mate. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this dialog box. And right next to the insert button, there's a mate connector button. And this exists for this very specific use. When an implicit mate does not exist, and you need to create your own mate connector. So with this dialog box, I want to choose from the drop down menu between entities and then now what I can do is I'm going to zoom into my point of interest here I want to align one of my connectors where the one side would be right in the center of the hole but on this surface so right here I'm going to click there the edge of that arm is already referenced here and it, it's between two entities so I need to choose my other entity which would be the other side go ahead and move this over and I can click anywhere on this face because it's between those two entities so between that face and the other face and I'm referencing the center of the circle and now I have my mate connector right where I want it right there so now I can click the check mark and I have created an explicit mate that just stays with that object so now I can use that to create my revolute mate so find the revolute mate and now I can select my explicit mate connector and then I'm going to find the spot on the base where it's supposed to connect let me find that spot and if I hover over the cylinder you can see there's very useful things here there's a implicit mate on one end of the cylinder and the center and then on the other end and there's also a couple others but that's really neat so I hover over the surface of a cylinder it gives me three very useful mate options either end and the center so when I align the center of course with the center of the cylinder I'm going to zoom out to see what we have here go ahead and orbit and there's one other thing that I'm trying to pay attention to and that is that the X and the Y are aligned with each other so I'm going to show you what it looks like when they're not aligned so I'm going to go ahead and click on reorient, reorient secondary axes or axis and you can see just kind of faintly there if I hover over 
the arm oh no it doesn't do that so let me just explain it if I can there's a bold X and there's kind of a shadowy X and they're not aligned same thing with the Y there's a, a bolded Y and then there's another Y that's hidden by the bold X there so you can see that they're not aligned with each other so I'm gonna go ahead and re reorient them until they are aligned with each other so here you can see it looks like maybe they are aligned but they're not because the Y is not in in line so let me go ahead and reorient until everything looks right that looks correct it's basically back where we started so that's where we want to be make sure if you need to you can change the secondary axis if you need to until it looks correct then press the check mark to accept it now we need to add our bracket so where did our bracket go even it's somewhere we tossed it over to the side there it is all right so on my notes we are going to the arm and the base have I just missed something so in our rev revolute mate we forgot to add some limits so right now if I were to grab my arm and move it around it's going to travel through the base and through the plunger or whatever that thing is and it's not realistic in the laws of physics so we're going to fix that by adding some limits so I need to go into my revolute mate options so double click that I'm going to add limits and this will allow me to put in some specific minimums and maximums so if I were to move the arm around it can actually show me the degrees I believe yes the degrees of travel so as I move it you can see the angle from the original spot so we go past it starts to go so now this is 348 degrees so the two numbers that I need to put in I just got from this exercise so for the minimum we're going to type in 1.5 degrees and then the maximum travel is going to be 86.5 now I can see in my project I can only go to 86.5 degrees and it stops same thing with the other range of travel I can only go to 1.5 degrees travel in the other way so now that is correct I'm going to press the check mark to accept that and now we can get back to adding our bracket so this is going to be attached with a revolute mate as well because it just revolves it doesn't uh, there's no other direction of travel so I'm going to go ahead and find the revolute mate and I'm going to add it to the plunger first so I'm going to find the center and for this I want to make sure I'm zoomed in because I want the center of this inside cylinder so if I hover over it I get it's kind of faint to see here but if you hover over the surface you can see the three options either end and then I'm trying to get it in the center which would be right here so make sure that you see those options before you click and that you're choosing the correct one so you want the center option it's not a very big cylinder so it's a little bit tricky to line it up and it's not wanting to I might have to orbit a little bit to get it in the right spot come on there we go right there 
click to place it. So that's one mate point. I need to find the plunger. So I'm going to go back over here, orbit so I can see this cylinder. And again, you want it to be in the center, not on the end, not on either end of the cylinder, but right in the center. So let me go ahead and zoom in so you can make sure you see what it is we're looking at here. So right there. All right, so since this is dependent on the, the plunger, and then the other end is going to be dependent on the handle, so we're going to just go ahead and accept this. And now I'm going to create the same mate, so a revolute mate. Find the center of the other hole here. So hover over that cylinder and try to again get the center option. This can be a little bit tricky. Oh. There, I caught it. There it is right there. And then attach it to this cylinder here. Okay, so again, when you're creating a mate, it ignores other connection points as you're creating it. But you can click the solve button to see how it's eventually supposed to look, and it will reconnect all the other connections. So I'm going to click solve, and it should attach all the different parts to where they're supposed to be. And now you can see the relationship between all those parts and I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so we can kind of see how they interact with each other. If we go ahead and click the check mark. You can see the range of travel is correct. Everything looks like it's working properly. So there's one last step and that's to connect the the grip to our arm. So this little guy here is supposed to be attached. So in order to do this correctly, I need to be able to see the inside of the handle here, of the grip. So I'm going to go ahead and choose in our options here, just below the view cube, there's another cube with a little arrow. Click on that one, and you're going to choose section view. And then we want to choose the plane that is this handle here. Let me go ahead and see if I might be helpful if you're viewing it straight on from the right side. And let me see how this is panning out here. Yes. So what we want to do is slice it to where we're looking at the side here on the inside. So this is the only object that I want affected. And because I clicked on that and nothing else is intersecting that, um, I don't need to exclude any items. But if there were other items that kind of disappeared because of this view, you can select items to exclude and then select items either here in the work area or over to the left can highlight all the other items that you don't want affected by that view. And then we click the check mark. So I can use this view now to create my last mate. So I need, I'm going to be using a fasten mate because the grip does not travel along the arm. It just is fixed in place. So I'm going to find fasten mate, and I want to find the implicit mate right here. At the top of the handle, there's a circular arc. So at the center of that is where I want to place my mate. So I have that right there. So that's the inside surface of my grip. So in relation to that, I would want that fastened to this side of my arm. So right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click. It's going to chain, it's going to attach it there, and I can go ahead and 
orbit to see how that looks. And right now that's, that's a good placement, but it needs to be rotated. So I need to reorient it, reorient the secondary axis until it looks right. So I had to press it a few times, and now everything looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark to accept that. And you can see the, the finished motion and all the different mate relationships working beautifully. That concludes this exercise.